So Simple is an open source, smart and secure middleware platform that supports data access and interoperability among European data spaces. But as you can see, I cannot even uh, say that. So we have an amazing person uh, that will let us know everything about Simple. So I would like to uh, call on the stage Valentina Staveris. Uh, she's an IT procurement policy officer at DigiConnect. Uh, one round of applause for Valentina. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, good morning. I hope the coffee break was pleasant. Uh, sorry for my robotic voice because <laughs> I had uh, and some coughing probably during the session. But I hope uh, it will still be understandable and that you can hear me. So I'm presenting you simple today, a bit the state of play and uh, it's a, a big framework of what it is, simple. Um, I'm Valentina Stavaris and uh, project officer, so I'm part of the team in the cloud and software unit uh, managing simple with colleagues that you have in the room as well who are implementing uh, simple. But I'm, I'm coming back to, you, to that in a moment. Um, so just a quick uh, round of what uh, we tackle today. Um, making a refresh of what is simple uh, for those or uh, simply introducing simple for those who didn't uh, hear about simple before um, and then explaining a bit related to the session we just had a bit the uh, mentality of how we implement simple which is not a typical uh, European Commission project and we try to be as transparent as possible as open source as possible so explaining a bit um, these uh, aspects and then the latest news uh, about it. But first of all, come, let's uh, come back to basics. What is simple? So I'll let you read the definition of simple and highlighting, uh, there is a highlight on some words that are key to us, um, being open source, so very much relevant for also the session we just had. So because we think that this builds trust in uh, the middleware we are building um, and to have, of course, the, the adoption that, um, that we, we hope to have uh, once it's available. Um, it's also uh, helping about the flexibility of the project and of the program, sorry, and the tool. And so to have um, the, the most uh, interoperability uh, in the end. Uh, same for the for the middleware. So uh, we we think that building, let's say, the backbone of uh, of the software uh, will enable interoperability, but also uh, the maximum usage of it. And um, this is done in uh, the at the moment in use cases for the common European data spaces. But of course, it can be uh, used for other use cases, cloud to edge federations, and others. So uh, this is, we are starting um, to, to run and we hope that Simple will be able to respond to many challenges. So in a nutshell, what is Simple? It's a common software that will enable common data spaces. So, and, and will help them to uh, be more interoperable. Just a very shiny slide, but <laughs> uh, re relocating simple in the context of the uh, legislation and on the uh, different oper operations that you might have. So uh, si um, simple is part of the technical infrastructure implementation of uh, all data, uh, let's say, market. Okay. Um, and what is simple, in fact? Simple is uh, made by three three products. So we are uh, we have Simple Open, Simple Labs, and Simple Live. Um, simple Open being the core product, what we are developing at the moment, um, and uh, we'll come back to that how we are developing it. Um, simple Labs is the test bed or sandbox to test uh, Simple Open, um, and will enable for uh, people interested to build a data space to test it, to test the solution and see if it fits to, to their needs. But also if you have already a data space uh, operational to see if there is an interoperability with some components or all the components that you uh, would like to, to use. And uh, lastly, we have Simple Live, which is the um, real application of Simple Open. Um, and at the moment we have six data spaces on board that are um, conducting a feasibility, or we are conducting a feasibility studies for them, which will um, be closed by the end of the, this month. 
and we will publish, of course, the results very soon. Um, and this um, basically allow us to understand what are their needs, specific needs, and to, to be able to respond to those needs in the implementation of SIMPLE. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so SIMPLE is deployed through, the data, through different um, data spaces, for instance, where you, you can have decentralized and centralized uh, components. I will let you, you will have the slides if you want afterwards, so you can also have a look and come back to us if you have specific questions for, for this. Um, and SIMPLE can either be used within a data space uh, with different components um, that to share data within the data space, but also with, as, we, as I said before, um, to be interoperable with other data spaces. So to interact more with, with the, let's say, external world of your data space. Um, yeah. To help us in the, uh, in the context of the implementation of SIMPLE, we have um, launched and signed uh, two framework contracts. Um, so with two consortia that will help us in the, um, in the implementation. So the first uh, specific contract was launched in, uh, started in January, and we have here representative of the Sovereign X consortium um, who was awarded of the first contract. So uh, running the first implementation cycle of uh, Simple Open and the feasibility studies of live and labs. Um, we have also to support in the quality assessment of the, the contracts, we have also a program support office, uh, and this is managed by Indra. So typical, let's say, contractual <laughs> part of this. But we'll see that still Simple is not uh, a typical maybe uh, IT project of the commission, in the sense here you have a, a bit the timeline of our um, program this year until early next year. So with the different um, milestones of the different products. So for open, we had a proof of concept that was released, and I'm coming back to that later, but um, a proof of concept for end of June and it was successfully delivered by, by the consortium, and we will have a minimum viable product by the end of the year. And um, it will be presented for, at the annual event. I'll come back to, you, to that for, for <laughs> the announcement. Um, for the lives and labs, uh, we are at the feasibility study um, phase, so to understand what are really the requirements and the use cases that are uh, relevant for, uh, for both products. And here, as I mentioned before, live will end up, the, the feasibility study will be submitted by the end of this uh, month. For the labs, it's a bit later, but labs will have also a proof of concept. And we present both the proof of concept of labs and the MVP of open at the annual event early next year. Um, and where is a bit atypical, I would say, uh, as an IT uh, project of the Commission, we really want uh, the community to start being involved. So we are, uh, we are uh, being as transparent as possible. Um, so publishing the requirements, we started in March to publish the requirements, and we are uh, regularly uh, updating them. So, um, and same thing with the code, so, which was uh, published already uh, after the POC. So <laughs> you, I will uh, give you all the details to be able to contribute and to, um, to be able to give you, uh, have your say in the, contract, in the building of uh, Simple. Uh, you will have, of course, also other material, typical social media, the other channels to be to be uh, used for um, to to keep a, keep update uh, on the on simple. Uh, just contractually speaking, but also to give an idea when products will be available. As I said, the blue parts are the parts that we have already in our pipeline. So in the contract of uh, Sovereign X. Um, where we have the implementation of open, but also the feasibility studies of lab, live and labs. Um, and we will have a new batch of um, feasibility studies for new um, data spaces involved uh, very soon. Um, uh, very soon, and, and then um, 
Prob probably by the by next year we'll have the implementation of uh, of uh, live and labs, but uh, we'll, we'll come back. To that. Um, no questions so far. Yes. Sorry. Here it is. Here is the mic. <coughs> um, they are, yeah. they are so, sorry, uh, how like you will define the new data space? The new data space is, so the, the badge that is coming, coming already, um, it's already defined and it's based on the priorities of uh, the DEP program, so the, the digital, uh, digital program. Um, so uh, this is kind of the priority data spaces and so we have mobility, green deal, uh, but of course more to come. So it's, it's a bit, for the moment we focus on uh, EU, uh, common European. No, 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 no. But even if, let's say the definition of data space, we saw already in the first batch of study and that's why we are very curious to see the conclusion of the studies. Um, one data space, even if they are built as a data space, they are very different among themselves. So, yeah. Um, I have two questions. Um, first, will you touch upon what is included in the minimum viable product? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> and will you also tell some more about what is uh, included in the Cloud Edge uh, Federation? Uh, Capabilities. So far, we we are tackling, uh, and I speak with the technical expertise of Saulo that is here and uh, an architect of the of the program. But so far, we are uh, focusing on the data spaces. But we see uh, other potential implementation of uh, of simple in the near future. Saulo, do you want to complement or uh, uh, mic microphone? Can we here? Can we use this one? There was one uh, one question about what is the, the MVP including. Yeah, but you, I'll I'll come back to that. Yeah. So this, but for the cloud to edge, if you the have cloud to edge, yes, simple has also capability to allow sharing of infrastructure capabilities. So infrastructure is treated like data. So the uh, middleware will be able to share in multi-cloud, so agnostic, uh, any type of cloud capability. So if someone has EIS service to offer, or a pass to offer, or SaaS to offer, this one can be shared in a platform. Uh, of course, there is also aspect of uh, contract and billing and SLA that will be supported. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, hi, thank you. Um, how how is uh, simple different from the scope which Gaia X is trying to achieve and has been building on? Uh, we get a lot of this question. <laughs> um, you want to reply? No, just saying that, and also reassuring that we are not reinventing the wheel, and this is uh, part of uh, also simple. Uh, as from from the very beginning, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but we want to use what is uh, reusable and uh, build a, build some components that are not available, for instance, in GAIAX and so on. So develop what needs to be developed and reuse where it's possible. So, and I will let uh, Saulo complete maybe the question. <laughs> of course, there is also Pierre in the room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the GAIAX innovation yeah. <laughs> manager. There, there is two, let's say, two gap, I mean, in the market. One. We have a lot of software available packages that try to address especially the functional part. So functionally, they work. So the aim of Simple is, first of all, is to make a blend. So to try to pick it up the best product for the market and improve them. So there is an integration work to improve them. There is also another work to bring them to an industry standard. So it means can be used by business. So it means address all the non-functional requirements. They are behind that. And of course, there is a conversion that will happen in the next three, five years where uh, the best product will be elected. They will start to be <coughs> But uh, side <coughs> note, we collaborate with all the, uh, yeah. the, the major initiatives in that space. So we have uh, people on our project delivery they are member of Gaia X or IDSA or all the other mm -hmm. uh, association at the moment. No question. It's 
So, um, as I mentioned uh, before, we, we really uh, want this to be as open source as possible. So this means also that we, we are publishing since uh, very early in the program the uh, business requirements and uh, having the uh, an agile requirement solicitation so to allow a contribution to uh, come and feed what the, the development team is doing. Um, so nothing new. So just to give you uh, a bit uh, the structure of our requirements. So quite typical, the uh, business processes, the high level requirements and detailed one, and then the user stories. We are, uh, as I mentioned, we are publishing them uh, progressively and updating them progressively. So uh, please um, don't hesitate to provide your, your uh, feedback um, to also those are the uh, 11 processes that are supported at the moment. Of course, uh, any, any uh, opinion is uh, welcome to uh, help us uh, enriching and building um, better uh, the simple in general. And on the software development side, we do the same. So as we mentioned, the, the proof of concept was done end of June. Uh, and we are five sprints following this POC, and now we are preparing for the minimum viable product. You see uh, there the, the the scope that is stabilized now, and um, I don't know if, uh, Saulo, you want to precise, or if this replies to your question, the question of the gentleman. What we want to achieve is uh, at least yeah. the all the step associated with the publication of uh, assets. And then, uh, of course, the part of uh, searching, and then some elements also for the usage. So it means if someone wants to share data or an infrastructure elements, and there is a consumer that wants to combine an infrastructure capability, and on top of that, to build some consumption of that, so elaboration of data, that's in the, is the full cycle of the data space. Of course, there will not be all the functionalities or detailed functionality, but we want to cover at least the full cycle to enable uh, data space. Uh, La Valentina speaks before about simple life to start trying and experiment. So we want the people, and, and I mean, it's an open source project to start to get uh, and so on, and to look how their business or their uh, government uh, services can start using this uh, middleware. <laughs> One practical question about the resource descriptions. Uh, is a kind of description for, uh, for people, for humans, or is the description ready for, um, say, being used by machines or by something else? We use a standard like uh, DCAT and self-description, and they can be both use, of course, human readable, but also ready for uh, machine processing. So thank you. So I wanted to know how it, it exactly interacts with the, the different infrastructures. I mean, it's thought to be uh, across different uh, infrastructural layer, I mean different cloud uh, frameworks, or can be and work only on homogeneous frameworks? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the idea maybe, I mean, uh, there was one slide before, I mean the technical one, yeah. but uh, the way simple will be deployed is via an agent. An agent is a, a software package that allows interoperability. So if you, are, if you have some data sets, I don't know, you are the Ministry of Health of uh, Belgium, you want to share some uh, medical data for sake or any use, the aim is that you take the middleware, the software, in your own data center, and you say this one allows <coughs> to create interoperability between your data and all the other simple circles on the subset of data you want to share. If on top of that, for example, you have infrastructure asset because you have an algorithm to elaborate certain things and you want to offer 
and hardware. So I have some capacity in my data center. The same middleware allow you to share a service or pass service. So it's a, a middleware that allow you to share. Independent if you have a, a physical infrastructure or you are a cloud provider or you have a, an hybrid uh, infrastructure behind you. So that's the end. Thank you, Saul. Um, so, um, how to contribute to Simple? And well, we uh, launched uh, last week our newly uh, website, newly done website. Thank you, Eileen, <laughs> for the great work that has been done. Um, and in this website, it's really the gateway for the for Simple, where you will f you will be able to find the links to the to the uh, repository for the code. Uh, the requirements are published regularly on this website, but also articles. Uh, blog posts and uh, other information about uh, what's happening for, for Simple. Um, so please uh, visit regularly so that you can contribute also to uh, all our uh, new uh, elements. Uh, important date for us is the first annual event of Simple. will be held on the 30th of January in Brussels, and I can say in, in Auto World. Um, and there we will have the live uh, demo of the minimum viable product of the uh, Simple Labs uh, POC and, um, and also to provide the conclusion about the feasibility studies um, and other interactive sessions we hope uh, you, you will be able to join and contribute. Uh, registration will be uh, starting soon so we'll uh, keep uh, keep uh, an eye on the website uh, in and the social media of course um, for more information voilà. I give you just the QR code so you can have the link tree with all the links useful for the website and for the social media um, voilà. I don't know if you have any more questions okay. thank you uh, I would like to compliment you for the presentation that is uh, unusual, as you said, because it's a very product management angle that I think okay. is very welcome. And on that, I wanted to ask you, you know, in middleware there are APIs for applications, but they are so-called SPI for service providers. So mm -hmm. someone could replace or provide alternative of pieces of simple. And this is a question about the value chain, not on the, the technical. So is this expected to be had in simple so that you could have an ecosystem of you know, alternative providers while guaranteeing interoperability and so on? So what is the, the, the vision for that in simple? I turn to Saulo because <laughs> this is uh, quite, quite technical. <laughs> so. I, I'm going to the subject because it's hot, especially for yeah. the connector side. Yes. So one of the major components that will address okay. certain capability is the connector, okay? For which one, for example, IDSA make a regular analysis on that. The idea as an open source is not to limit the technology behind the components. It's to have a framework that can complete the step of the data space, so the business process end to end. But this one doesn't stop to have alternative components that can fusion on that. So for example, you can, having, especially there is a, a, a standard, now there is an open discussion to make the data space portal an ISO standard, is going by the end of the year for that. So it means that everyone that support the standard can talk with simple. Take the example for email, you have multiple products that support, that can deliver email service, but you have two, three protocol, they are the common standard to make sure this one they operate. So very welcome to people if they want to develop uh, new components. Of mm. course, we are making the first core, so the first year and the first mm. core. Then how these people, if these people show up as an open community, eventually during next year, via conversation with the commission, so on, we'll see how to eventually onboard even external collaboration but the aim is to go really open source and uh, uh, implement, uh, you know, fa give favor to, to other contributors. Last question. 
Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, but my point was not so much about the open source uh, being a limiting factor, if you want. <coughs> it's the middleware that is the limiting factor, because the middleware is like a contract. If uh, the service provider do this and this and this, and the application do this and this and this, they will work together. Now you put in the middle for that. So this is what I wanted to know. If you are already thinking uh, of a framework where uh, providers can have uh, uh, already some software specification that they know what do they have to provide in order to fit in your, all that you said is also important, I agree with that, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to understand if you already have or are planning a framework so that company that wants to provide can analyze this and see what can they can do with their existing Valentina. product, you know? Right Good. So uh, <laughs> let me support my colleagues in, uh, in this uh, more technical part. First thing, uh, Giovanni, it is that simple it is uh, an open source uh, software framework. So it's not by default going to be operated by simple, but it is going to be operated in the different data spaces that will adopt simple. So first thing. Then, on the possibility of, of uh, replacing certain building blocks, yes, the, the idea of the, and if you look at the very initial uh, Deloitte study on, on simple, you will see that the idea and the guiding principles of the architecture remain the same. The idea of the different building blocks it is that you will be able to replace certain of them and to adopt just the pieces, the parts and pieces that uh, will be interesting. And this, in fact, this is the approach that currently is being taken in simple life, in which we are analyzing for the different data spaces which parts of simple would be helpful for them and would complement what they already have in place or what the different uh, kind of providers could be providing. So. By definition, simple has been thought with this idea of uh, being able to replace uh, certain buildings, building blocks, and therefore enabling to, to what you are calling for, in fact. To complete, Allah, the source code, if you go on the link there, the source code is already available. And uh, we are in the process to finalize with uh, our uh, I mean, counterpart PSO, the quality of the architecture documents. So we are making eff effectively uh, a bit more, uh, let's say, uh, better than a programmer level, okay? So, uh, and so should be available soon. <coughs> huh? But uh, you will have all the architecture diagrams, including APIs and technical information. Mm -hmm. So effective people can start thinking how to interact with those components. Okay, so stay in tune. And <laughs> stay tuned. Um, somewhere in autumn, we should have also the updated architecture documents that are very much welcome. <laughs> well, no. So, wow, thank you thank for you. sparking such a discussion. Thank wow. you. <laughs>